And God, tonight, I just pray that you would just fill this place with praise. We will fill this place with praise. You fill it with your presence, God. Fill it with your presence, God. Speak to us, Jesus. Lord, help us to remember the promises that you have given that we would hold on to them, cling to them as though they are life because, God, it is your word of life to our very soul. And we thank you for that tonight. And Lord, we just worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sing of your goodness, Jesus. Ever be on my lips, ever be Come on, sing it out, church. Your praise, your praise ever be on my lips. On my I will sing of your love forever. Ever be on my lips, for all that you are and all that you've done. Your praise. When I'm upset, your praise. When I'm mad, your praise will be on my lips. When I'm when, when I don't know what's going on, when I'm certain and I'm facing fear, still God, your praise will forever be on my lips. And God, when I don't know what's going on, your praise will ever be on my lips. I will not give my praise to complaint. I will not give my praise to gossip. I will not give my praise to negativity. I will not give my praise to slander. I will not give my praise to doubt. I will not give my praise to fear. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise. It's not my praise. It's your praise. Your praise. Your praise. You know, I believe that's one of the biggest things the enemy wants to do in your life is to take away God's praise from your lips. 
you can think about even in the last 24 hours if you got to go back a little further than that do it but think about the things that have come out of your lips think about the the negative thoughts you know it's funny even during the time of fasting those of you who do it I've had to catch myself a few times think about the things that come out of your lips oh this is hard oh I'm hungry oh I'm thirsty oh oh would you stop it and put the praise back where it belongs which is to him and think about it, it's in any other time of your day. Maybe it's not during fasting. You say, I believe the Lord is good. Does what come out of our lips reflect that we think and we say the Lord is good? When you're mad at your spouse, when you're angry with your kids, when you see something you don't like and it stirs some sort of emotion in you, what's on your lips? We just got finished. We're singing, your praise will ever be on my lips. Not your praise will be on my lips when I'm feeling praisey, when I'm feeling worshipy. You just, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise ever be on my lips. It says in Ephesians 4.27, and don't even let the devil have a foothold. You know, I was looking up that word today, foothold. Y'all have heard that word, right? Good old spiritual word right there in the New Testament. Well, let me, let, me, let me get a little unspiritual and go a little basic here. It's a word that means opportunity, space, a spot, time. Think about what you give to the devil. Do you give him an occasion? That's another word. An occasion to show himself up. An opportunity. And by the way, the best way you can tell if he's got a foothold, listen to what comes out of your mouth. Listen to what, because that's where he'll take his occasion. And see, and that should have warned, that should alarm you a little bit, because the Bible says in Matthew that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Don't feel condemned, but feel challenged. Let's put that praise back on our lips. You may not even feel like praising. I don't say nothing about feeling anything. There's what you feel and there's what you know. When I feel fear, I still know that my God, His love casts out all fear. When I feel mad, I know that I still have the joy of the Lord in my God who is my strength. When I'm feeling weak, I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, these are the promises. you got to stand on those promises. When I'm feeling ashamed, I can know that there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. When all hell is breaking loose around me, I can know that God is still the God that works all things together for them that love Him and are called according to His purpose. It's not about what you see. It's about what you know. It's not about what you hear. It's about what you know. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you know. Can somebody say amen? Don't give the devil a foothold with your mouth. Declare the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, as we, as, as we transition into the Word tonight, would you, would, can we just do that course? Just the course. But we'll do it a few times, but just do the course. Come on, church. Let this be your declaration right now. Your declaration right now. Come on, lift your voice tonight. Lift your voice. Jesus, you've heard us declare that tonight. Pray that you would just help us to know. Convict us, Holy Spirit, when we move away from that.
so that we can repent and get back on the track and let that let that praise continue because without you we're nothing we have nothing we need you holy spirit of god we need you thank you jesus it's in your name we pray amen amen all right you can be seated Listen, I know what time it is. I know, the, I know the weather is what it is. Thank you for being here tonight. This is, has anybody been blessed this week? Yeah, this has been pretty great. I've, I've enjoyed this myself. This has been what I needed. Uh, I, I encourage you in your time of uh, prayer and fasting, if you're joining us in that, I, I, I encourage you to be here tomorrow night. I know maybe some of you have been here all the night so far. Hey, listen, God has put a word in my heart. You know, I, 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 I'll, I'll preach it to two people. I know, you know, my, my wife and I don't know who else, well, three people, because I know Paul and Tracy are going to be here tomorrow night. And anybody else, you know, I'm going to preach it. But, you, I, I, you know, listen, and don't, don't, don't think it's going to be live streamed, because we ain't going to live stream it, because you need to be here. All right? We ain't live streaming it. Be here. Because I'm going to, I'll even tell you right now, I'm going to be talking out of Matthew 4. And we're going to be looking at how Jesus declared the promises when he was attacked. He said three words. It is written. And I believe that God is going to challenge you and do some changing in your life tomorrow night. It is written. Okay? But that's tomorrow. Now, that's not tonight. Tonight, Pastor Richard Rockine is going to preach. He's going to shout. He's going to challenge. He's going to encourage. And I want you to open up your hearts and hear what God is doing. Amen? All right. Come on, Pastor. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand already. Hey, you know what? I couldn't help but realize that it takes a uh, it takes a snowy Tuesday revival meeting to get the Bojanics up at the front. Come on. Good evening. Thanks for coming. It's gonna be a great night. You say amen. This is an oldie but a goodie if you know it's singing.
that He will carry you. Come on, slip your hands up. Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but how many tonight are trusting in the name of the Lord? That's why we're here. Come on, give the Lord a hand tonight, would you? Well, I'm not going to use the table. I'm going to use this music stand. Well, good evening. Thanks for coming. How many have had a great time? These have been some great services. By the way, this is my this is my Don Black outfit. He dressed like this on Sunday. This is my Don Black setup. But I'm excited about tonight. God has been doing some great things, and and through these services, Sunday morning was tremendous. Sunday night, hands down, was a wonderful event. Last night was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you were listening. And so, and so tonight, in just a few moments, I'm going to get into the Word. There's going to be a, a lot of things that I'm going to mention, a lot of things that I'm going to share, a lot of things that I'm going to be uh, bringing uh, forward tonight. So really, there's no particular text to go to, but I want you to just be excited. Put your seatbelt on, get ready for the ride. We're just going to hear from him. We're going to be challenged, encouraged, stirred. We're going to be uh, blessed. We're going to invite him to come and minister to us. Uh, we're going to have a tremendous altar time this evening. And so we're excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? Father, have your way. We're privileged to know you, to serve you. Thank you for your promises that are yea and amen. Lord, bless those that are here. Bless those who could not come. Thank you for the services. Thank you for what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. Only heaven will reveal what's happened. We're excited about changed lives and those that have been touched and challenged and encouraged. Lord, have your way. We bless you. We're pri privileged to, to know you, to serve you, to have your promises to have your presence, to have your mercy and your grace and your goodness. Lord, have your way tonight. We bless you. We praise you. We lift you up and give you thanks. And everybody said amen. I've entitled the message, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But I want you to watch this and understand, you can take the middle part out. God said it, that settles it. God said it, that settles it. Say it with me. God said it, that settles it. He's given us a book of promises. God said it, that settles it. However, the middle part is very important. Because unless you believe it, not a whole lot's going to happen. So say it with me. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Here we go. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. You know, services like this are often referred to as Extended meetings. Am I right, Pastor? Extended meetings. Another word for these type of deals is special meetings. And I want you to know, honey, you're taking my water. Why are you doing that? You're holding it. Oh, hold on. Thank you, Jesus. I need it open. Open the water. Thank you, Father. I don't know what you're doing. Open the water, and it's going to go right there, and we'll move the book. Okay. Uh, these meetings have been called uh, uh, extended meetings. They've been called special meetings. And I like the idea, Tom, behind special meetings. You know why? Because you're all special, and God wants to do something special tonight. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. And as the Lord was giving me a lot of things to share tonight, I thought about the whole idea, obviously, of the promises of God. 
And I want to just off the bat declare a few things to you. I want you to know tonight, watch this, that we are uh, declaring tonight, we are making a conscious decision, watch this, that we are going to be standing on the promises of God. We're going to be holding on to the promises of God. We're going to be waiting on the promises of God. We're going to be proclaiming the promises of God. We're accepting the promises of God. We're confessing the promises of God. It gets better. Watch this. We're singing the promises of God. We're praying the promises of God. We're believing the promises of God. Seeking the promises of God. Can you believe there's even more trusting the promises of God? Two more declaring the promises of God. And we're thanking God for the promises of God. Now, I love hymns. Anybody else like hymns? I know we've got a lot of new songs that are out, and I'm all about Matt Redman and Chris Tomlin and Aaron Schust and Lincoln Brewster. I know those folks because of K-Love. But I'm thankful for the hymns. And I've often said I love the hymn book because it talks about him. There's great theology in those wonderful hymns of the past that we can still pull out from time to time and sing. And so I've asked Nolan, Pastor Nolan, to lead us and I'm going to be my crazy self and kind of work the crowd. We're going to get it up on here. We're going to sing tonight before I share the word, standing on the promises of God. Are you ready? Is there a drummer that we can find tonight? Uh, 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 obviously, Josh does a great job, no doubt about it. Paul, are you a drummer? Can you imagine seeing him on the drums tonight, how tall he is? <laughs> that would be a sight to see. Are you ready? Here we go. Standing on the promises. Well, you go ahead. You start it. I'll follow you. Get the right key. Promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let the praises ring. Sing it. The highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Come on, Crossway. Well, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Here we go, the next verse. Standing on the promises that God not fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. While well, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Here we go. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily through its sword. Standing on the promises of God. What are you doing? Well, I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Is there one more verse? Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. This thing every moment. Everybody! Standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing, standing. Well, I'm standing. Is of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. While I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I've always wanted to do that. I'm standing on the promises of God. Come on! Woo! Pastor Chris is even a drummer. I forgot that's one of his many things that he does. That's what we're doing tonight. We're standing on the promises. Can you say amen? 
And speaking of hymns, I, uh, <laughs> I recently came across this. This is entitled, Honest Hymn Singing. And uh, it simply goes like this. If we were entirely honest every time we sang a hymn or a gospel song, here's how some of the old favorites would come out. Again, if we were entirely honest every time we sang a hymn or a gospel song, here's how some of the old favorites would come out. I surrender some. There shall be sprinkles of blessings. Fill my spoon, Lord. Oh, how I like Jesus. I love to talk about telling the story. I like this one. Take my life and let me be. <laughs> it is my secret what God can do. Onward, Christian reserves, and when the saints go sneaking in. May I remind you tonight that we're talking about the promises of God. And isn't that what a Christian is? Isn't that what a believer is? Isn't that uh, what, what those that know the Lord and serve the Lord do? We're, we're, we're holding, we're grabbing, we're confessing, we're proclaiming the promises of God. That, that's what a believer is. That, that's why we're here tonight. Have you seen the Star Wars movie? Have you seen the Star Wars movie, The, the Force Awakens? I went with my family and I fell asleep. Yes. yes, I did. Scott Classic still can't believe I fell asleep. He said, how's that possible? It is. One of the best naps I've ever had. I was out, man. Wasted $12.50, my wife just said. Yes, we did. In Jesus' name. I also fell asleep at the Minions movie. Both films had the 3D glasses. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But forget about the force that awakens. We've got God's presence. We've got God's anointing. We've got a book filled with promises. Can you say amen? You know, the Bible is known as the book of promises. It's a love letter. I remember when I first started dating Jennifer. I'm from Baltimore. She lived in Cranberry. I would send her postcards from the PA Turnpike. That's pretty basic stuff, isn't it? Not a whole lot involved there. But that's better than nothing. Postcards from the PA Turnpike. And I've moved up. I'm doing good now, folks. I'm, uh, you know, I'm uh, sending her cards from the Dollar Tree now. But remember when you were young and you got love letters? I know Pastor Lance touched on a little bit uh, last night. Tremendous insight, wasn't it? But when you got a love letter as a kid, what did you do? Did you, did you, did you speed read it? I don't, I don't think so, did you? You, you, you grabbed it, you cherished it, you covered it, you coveted it, and you, you, you took it serious, and you, you took it to heart. May I remind you tonight that the book of promises, the word of God, it's a love letter to you. It's a love letter to me. You know, the Bible is a book that everyone has, but very few know. Somebody once put it this way, when your Bible's messed up, chances are your life isn't. I heard of a pastor who went to visit a family that had not been to church for a while, and when the little boy opened the door... He said, I knew you were coming because my mother dusted the Bible off. You know, the book of promises, the word of God, it's a road map. It's our compass. It's our instruction manual. It's our GPS. I remember years ago traveling, I bought one of those GPSs. Or in fact, my father-in-law, I think, got me one. And it, uh, it had some issues. It had an attitude. It would often say Recal recalculate while in a Lowe's parking lot. My wife's got this phone deal where it talks to her now, and she'll yell into it. And she'll fight with the person on that phone. That voice, my wife's arguing with her. I said, the Walmart and Gibsonia. <laughs> A church bulletin captured this reality in the following prayer. So far today, Lord, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy or grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that, Lord, but in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a lot of help. You see, the Bible says in John 15 and verse 5, without me, you can do nothing. Without him, without his word, we can't do a thing. When I'm lost, and I've been lost many times, do you know what I do? I ask somebody that knows the area where to go. I ask someone that has experience and knows what they're talking about. The Bible tells us that in the book is everything for life and godliness. All that we'll ever need is found in this book of promises. Can you say amen tonight? We sang about it. We did some worship regarding the promises. And so in a little while, you're going to make a declaration yourself. You're going to step out of your comfort zone and come up here with me. And we're going to really take these things to heart. 
You know, who can we trust? Let me ask you that. We live in a world where we can't really trust anybody. That's all the more reason why we can depend on this. Because I'll, I'll break promises. You probably will break promises. Even Pastor Chris may mistakenly, if you will, break a promise because he's human. But, but God keeps his promise. But, you know, I, I, I wonder, you know, who can we trust today? I'm not trying to gossip here tonight, but there's a point to what I'm about, I'm about to say, and that's this. I feel bad for Bill Cosby. Look at what's going on there. Dr. Huxtable, who would have ever thought? The ultimate father, Mr. Jello Pudding. Who would have ever thought that someone like him would have some things that he's got to deal with? He was the complete package. He was known for his smile, his sense of humor, and the colorful sweaters on the Cosby Show. He's in a lot of trouble now. Did you know he's legally blind? He's legally blind. He can't see anymore. I feel sorry for Bill Cosby. But I got news for you tonight. He was blind long before he was blind physically. Because the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they don't see the light. What about Elmo? What happened to that guy? It's sad. My point is this. How innocent and how wonderful and how charming and how attractive and all of the things that go on. We can't trust. But God, he's the only one that won't hurt you and let you down and fail. He can't. And I want you to know tonight, our hope is not in Crossway Church. Our hope is not, our, our, our dependence, our, our reliance is not on Pastor Buddy, though you got to love this guy. He's done a great job. And he would be the first to tell you that he can't be trusted in the sense that he's not God. But we're here tonight declaring his promises Declaring his word, declaring that our hope and our peace and our joy and all that we'll ever need comes from him. It's him tonight. It's not our ministries. It's not our personality. It's not our denomination. It's not things and stuff. We are standing, hoping, and following in a God who loves you and speaks only the truth. Isn't that great to know? Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 reminds us, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. I love what Psalms 119 tells us in verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, God's word shows us where we're standing and God's word shows us where we're going. It's our compass. It's our direction manual. It's our instruction guide. That's what the word is. And it's filled with promises for all of us. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, I love it. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of the sinner, or sit in the seat of the mocker. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Say amen. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields his fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Many of you know, years ago, I lived in Syracuse and had the privilege of working with Teen Challenge, which is a Christian drug and alcohol program. I lived there for eight years, and I worked there. I was the dean of students. I did intake. I was a counselor, and I lived with the men. The secretaries and the director would go home at five with their briefcase and their purses and whatnot. I lived with the men, and I had an apartment hooked onto the dorm. So it never really ended for me. When you were a live-in staff and you live where you work and you work where you live, there's a lot of drama that goes with it. And so Fridays were my day off. Interestingly enough, my Fridays are my day off here at Crossway. But I love Pastor Chris so much, I'll work on Friday if he wants me to. But um, I lived there eight years, 50 bucks a week. And I lived where I worked. Fridays was my day off. So you don't, stare, you don't dare stay in your little apartment on the grounds on your day off. Why? Because they'll have you working. And I was in charge. I was the director, if you will, hands-on, living staff. So I could, if I stayed there, my, my, they would buzz my room and knock on my room. And I'd have all kinds of issues and problems. And so I just left every Friday. I would leave. But with 50 bucks, you can't do much. After I got gas, I had nothing left. 
So what I would do on Fridays with no money, really, Josh, I would go to the mall. That's what you do. Maybe go to the fort food court, get, get a coffee and look around and, and see all the things that I can't buy. And so there I would go to the mall. And back in 1991, they built the Carousel Center Mall, which is the second largest mall in the Northeast next to King of Prussia, outside of Valley Forge in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's called the Carousel Center. They've now added on tons of stuff since I was there in 91. And they call it the Carousel Center because there's literally a carousel in the food court. And everybody was excited, excited when they were building this mall in 1991. I'll never forget it. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go to the mall on the day it opens just to say I went there on the day that it opens. <laughs> and I did. But I forgot where I parked. <laughs> we're talking a huge place. I forgot where I parked. Has that ever happened to you? It's not a good deal. I forgot where I parked. I forgot where I went in. I knew I was lost because I kept coming by the same guy. He was handing me a flyer. <laughs> I went in circles. And then eventually I said, you know what? This is not getting any better. I am in fact lost. So therefore I need to go to the directory. It's amazing how a directory helps out. And when you go to a directory at the mall or other places, you always see the big words and the arrow which says, you are here. See, the reality is I couldn't go to where I wanted to go unless I first realized where I was. You see, that's what God's Word does. Let me be clear tonight. God's Word gives us a point of reference. God's Word gives us the bigger picture. See, I was walking around. The guy was handing me a flyer. It all looked the same to me. But yet the directory helped me to see clearly where I was and where I needed to go. I was lost and I needed direction. I had no idea where I came in truthfully and I had no idea how to get out. And I finally realized after being at the directory, there was something about J.C. Penny. And I said, by golly, I came in next to J.C. Penny's. Two hours later, I was a free man. Oh, my Lord. Because if you've ever been to the mall and you're not sure where you're parked, every door you look out at, you have no idea where your car's at. And then you start thinking, did I drive here? Did someone steal it? What am I driving? I don't even know. See, God's Word is a book of promises. And watch this. We may not like some of the promises, but they're still the truth. And they'll come to pass. I'm going to give you some. How about 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Friends, look at me tonight. we got to watch what we love. We have to watch what we're caring about and spending time with and investing in. We have to watch what we love and what we don't love and what we should love and what we should not love. Our love should be kept for God and His will and His purposes and His plan. How about this one? 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Bad company corrupts good character. I bet every one of us could put our hand up and we could say, we've done it. We know others that have done it. They've chosen to hang around the wrong people and it's caused issues for them. There's an old saying, hang around the barber long enough, you get a haircut. How about Jonah chapter 2 and verse 8? It says, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. I know of many people. In fact, the person who led me to the Lord in 1981 is not even serving Jesus anymore because he gave his heart and his life to idols and other things and other stuff. You know of people, I know of people that have forfeited God's grace, God's plan, God's anointing, God's purpose in their life because they succumb to other things. How about Matthew 10, it says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. That's a promise, see? We might not like that one. And how many know we've all denied him? Not just with what we say, but what we do and don't do. Our very existence and our lifestyle and our choices can deny his love and grace in our lives. How about Revelation 21, 27 says, Nothing impure will ever enter heaven, nor anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What do we need to do? We need to watch out for shameful, deceitful activity. And we need to realize that we need to live a life of purity. How about this one? Romans 14, 12 says, Every one of us, shall give an account of himself to God. 
you're going to give an account of yourself. Now, here we are at church. Pastor Chris has a staff meeting on Tuesday. But you know what I also have to do with Pastor Chris? He has what he calls a one-on-one. -on -one. That means where I, gotta, I get together with him, i got to show him what I'm doing here at Crossway. I can't just say, hey, Pastor Chris, high five, love you, brother. He says, what do you got for me? i got to come up with something. What am I doing here at the church? He calls a one-on-one -on -one with the staff to be accountable. Are you with me? And one day, you and I are going to stand before God on a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to say, what do you got? <laughs> okay, Lord, here we go. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 is another one. It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, the paycheck for doing wrong is death, not only physically, but I'm going to know you can kill your spirit, you can kill your relationships, you can kill God's purposes for your life, you can mess it all up because you succumb and you give in to sin. Sin is a terrible thing. You know, I didn't want to talk about food because we're fasting, but... Then again, why not? Because the Bible says in Psalms 34 and verse 8, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in Him, right? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, I know what I like to eat. Do you know what you like? I'm going to tell you what I like. Are you ready? When I want cookies... There's nothing like the Oakmont Bakery. You ever been there? Thank you, Jesus, for the Oakmont Bakery in Oakmont, Pennsylvania. Serious business. When it comes to pizza, I'm all about Ficelli's, but there's Grotto's, which I told Pastor Tim Saturin, who used to pastor in Wilmington, Delaware. Grotto's is a great place to eat pizza when we go there on vacation to Verhoeven. It's a, and my kids love Grotto's as well. They put the sauce on top of the cheese, and they spiral it like this. But it still goes down. When it comes to hamburgers, five guys. Amen. Or Mr. John Allison. Take a bow. All right. When it comes to Moe's, two home wreckers. Doesn't sound very Christian. Two home wreckers. There's a Chinese buffet that I go to sometimes when I'm in New Jersey. The, 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 the buffet rotates. You don't even have to move. You just stand there. It comes to you. Yeah. Come with me sometime. It's a lot of fun. I recently saw a diner. The sign said the food is great, but the parking is lousy. You see, when it's good, it's good. My wife and I are very different when it comes to food because my wife likes to try new things. I don't. My wife will try something new on the menu. My wife will, will, will uh, do the special. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't bother me with this. I don't care what the special is. I know what I like. I, I like the picture. I want it to look like the picture. It tastes like the picture. She likes to try new things. And I've learned a few things through the years regarding food, if you will. And I've watched the Food Channel, the Food Network, and all the other food shows that my kids uh, really are into. And, that, that, and that's this. It's simple ingredients. Pay attention to the little details. Don't overthink it and give it some TLC. And can I tell you tonight, God's Word is true. God's Word doesn't change. You can't add to it or take away from it. His Word works. His Word convicts. His Word sets free. His Word shows us the way and helps us to have the victory. I remember when I went to Valley Forge Bible College, I learned that people don't all cub, call a sub a sub. I call it a sub, submarine. I don't say that, but I say a sub. People used to uh, call pizza a pie. So my roommates were like, you want to get a pie? No, I'd like to get something to eat. They call a pizza a pie. They need prayer. I get this. But a submarine or a sub, but if you go to, uh, of course, uh, Philadelphia, they call it a hoagie. New England calls it a grinder. And then some folks call it a hero or a zep. I have no idea what those different things mean or came from, but, uh, but you know what? When you think about all the different terms, if you will, it all comes down to the bread. That's what sta is the staple of any kind of sub is the bread. And may I remind you tonight that Jesus is the bread of life. You see, God's word works. It doesn't need anything. May I remind you tonight, pastors should never preach their own opinions, but the word of God. Opinions don't change people, but God's word does. 
If a pastor's ever told that he uses too much scripture, I believe that to be a compliment. You see, the, the truth is God's word is it. It's not one of the many options on the menu to life. God's word is not one of many options on the menu to life. God's word is it. And we're here tonight standing on the promises, confessing, claiming, holding on to the promises of, of God for me and for you. And what God is and will always be is what, what is going to be enough. Certainly we know that. The Bible says that whatever we need, He's got it. And as Pastor Crystal covered tomorrow, Jesus said, It is written. The promises of God are true. The promises of God are simple. The promises of God are practical. They work. Are they easy? No. That's why we need God's help. And so I want to give you five nuggets, and then we're going to stand. Five principles, five nuggets, five challenges. Number one tonight, believe the promises of God. Believe the promises of God. Psalms 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Do you believe that God is close to you tonight if in fact you're hurting? Do you believe that God is concerned about your broken heart? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in all work. Do you believe that God is all about stuff? He's all about you? He's all about the agenda that He wants to bring your way and the blessings and the touch He wants to provide to you? Do you believe that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you'll abound in every good work? Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good to those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. It doesn't say all things work to the good to those who love him uh, half the time, part time, when it's convenient and want to do their own will, their own plans, their own purpose. No, God uh, works all things together for those that love him and have been called according to his purposes. We don't always have things go our way and certainly many times things do not go our way and many times there are issues and problems that come about not all things are good but God works it together for good to those who love Him. Hebrews 13 5 I will never leave you nor forsake you do you believe that tonight he'll never leave us nor forsake us Proverbs 18 24 he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother he's the ultimate friend Proverbs 27 10 though my father and my mother forsake me he'll receive me Secondly, we have to wait on his promises. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We have no place tonight for discouragement and fear. Why? Because God is with us wherever we go and we're waiting on him. 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast your cares upon me because I what? Care for you. Do you believe that he cares for you? Did he believe that he's in control tonight? Yes, you, you certainly do because you came out here. You took it uh, uh, one step in front of the other and you uh, came and you're being blessed. So we're standing and we're waiting on the promises. Isaiah 26 and verse 3, He will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on Him. Do you believe that as your mind is focused and your mind is committed, your mind is stayed on Him, will give you perfect peace, not as the world gives, but the peace of God certainly that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Him. Proverbs 16, 9 says, In a man's heart he plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. How many know God knows what he's doing with you and with me? Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you a rest. Are you weary? Are you burdened? Are you stressed out? Are you facing some things? He can give you rest tonight. Philippians 4, 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to him tonight. And he can handle it. He can take care of it. He knows what he's doing. Thirdly, accept his promises. Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Isaiah 43, 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Why I'm doing a new thing. How many believe that God's all about new stuff? God wants to bless you. New opportunities, new relationships, new ministry endeavors, new experiences, a new walk with him, new scriptures, new prayer time. God has a lot of stuff in store for me and you. James 1, 12, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he'll receive the crown of life that God has promised for those who love him. You've got to accept that tonight. 1 Corinthians 22 and verse 13, David said to his son Solomon, You shall prosper if you're careful to observe the statutes and ordinances which the Lord commanded Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed. Isaiah 49 verse 16 tells us that you and I are engraved in the palm of his hand. You accept that tonight? That's good stuff. Fourthly, we need to stand on His promises. 
Proverbs 18, 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. You know, my home is not a big home. We don't have a lot of stuff. But one thing my kids will often say about where we live in our house, they say they feel safe there. I mean, oh, that's what you want for your family, to feel safe. And God provides safety for all of us tonight. We can run to Him. Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Do you believe it? Absolutely. Romans 8 and verse 31 says, What shall we say in response to this? If God is for me, who can be against me? 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. God's watching you. God's checking you out. God wants to bless you and anoint you. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen to bless and touch those who have a heart that's committed to Him. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, one of my favorites, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. John 14, 27, peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, a very familiar scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge Him. What's that mean? Go to church, pray, read your Bible, fellowship with believers. We can't understand all that God's doing. You're not God. But we trust in Him. We acknowledge Him in all of our ways. And He'll direct your paths. And then lastly, proclaim His promises. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Matthew 7, 20, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move from here to there and it'll move. Psalms 121 and verse 1 says, I lift my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. God is there to help us. God is there to touch us. God is there to save us. God is there to pull us out. God is there to help us to build our faith in Him and to deal with stuff and trust Him that He's going to bring us through. John 15, verse 5 says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, in me and I in him, he'll bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. we got to believe that. Psalms, 30, Psalms 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Listen to this. You may have read this. I thought it's pretty cool. Cell phones versus Bible. Cell phones versus Bible. What if we carried it around in our purses or pockets? What if we flip through it several times a day? <laughs> what if we turned back when we forgot it? What if we treated it like we couldn't live without it? What if we gave it to our kids as gifts? What if we used it when we traveled? What if we used it in the case of an emergency? You know, Commander Scott's here with me tonight, and uh, I don't think there's any other commanders here tonight, but we've got our, uh, our Council of Achievement coming up, which, which is where the kids are quizzed. Well, in the last three months or so, and all that they've learned, Bible stories and scriptures and different things that they're learning to be responsible men of God. And so uh, at the Council of Achievement, they're going to have to sing, know and sing a song that I think is a great song to know and sing, and that's this. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. What makes a difference? Well, why is church different than any other venue or any other facility or building? It's God's Word. It's the promises. That's what brings people here. That's what draws people here. Yeah, God's presence and God's anointing, but it's His Word. It's a book. It's, a, it's, it's promises. Because our world is helpless and hopeless and frayed and lost and discouraged. And we need hope and peace and answers and wisdom and discernment and understanding. We need His grace and love. We need fellowship. We need identity. We need purpose and, and joy and love and acceptance. And we need to feel that we matter and we're important and somebody cares. Does God have favorites? You bet He does. You're all His favorite. He's into you tonight. That's what brings people to Crossway. It's not the coffee station. I mean, like the coffee station, thumbs up, right? It's not Mr. Tom Bronstein and his outstanding leadership with the men's ministry, though I love it. Can't wait to go to the man camp. It's not the gift bag idea that brings people to Crossway. It's not even the fact that our worship leader is a fox. Did you catch that? He's a single fox. But there it is. You know what brings people here? 
This book. You know what changes people? This book. You know what gets the job done? This. Would you stand? Your last name is Fox, isn't it? Okay, just making sure. Yeah, he's a fox. I said nothing. Untrue. Praise God. But you know what I want to do tonight? I want to give you an opportunity. You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 8, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. You know, just because you're here and you're a Christian, you're saved, you're born again, you've been water baptized and all these great things, doesn't mean you're exempt from stuff. And we all are facing some stuff. Anybody facing stuff, put your hand up. My hand's up. I got stuff. Yeah, we all have stuff. We all have things. Because this is life. And Jesus said, in this life, you will face stuff. But he didn't end there. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And because of that, he's in us and we're overcomers. All because of what he did on the cross for us. So I want, to, I, I want you to understand tonight that situations arise, difficulties come, headaches, heartaches, trials, problems, issues. But watch this, friends. When you're alone, He's there. When you feel discouraged, He cares. When you feel like nobody understands, and chances are they don't, He understands. When you see no way out, you can let Him in. And when you feel down, He'll lift you up. Can you say amen? We're going to pray for marriages. We're going to pray for homes. We're going to pray for finances. We're going to pray for addictions. We're going to pray over ministries and your job and your health. You know, the longer I'm saved, the more I realize the beauty of the footprint story. You know the footprint story? You've got a plaque. I've had a plaque probably in my apartment with Jennifer when we first got married or my place with Teen Challenge or when I was a youth pastor the footprints how many appreciate that story it's in those moments when you were desperate and discouraged and alone and felt like the way you couldn't go on anymore that you realized that it was the beauty of those one set of footprints because he was standing there carrying you I want you to know tonight he loves you and we're going to pray for you tonight if my wife would join me and pastor maria can come here's a question for you and if it hurts it hurts but i saw it and i want to ask you it tonight and that's this are you on facebook more than your face is in the book are you on Facebook more than the, your face is in the book? This is the book of promises. That other stuff can't help you and change you and rescue you and give you the joy and the peace that you need. It comes from Him and by Him and through Him. So tonight, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for the needs that you have here represented tonight. If you have to scoot out, you can go. If you've got kids, you can go grab them if you have to. And we're not going to lock you in. But I want to encourage you tonight, you've come this far in the weather. It certainly is very cold and windy, and that's not a good combination. But we want to pray tonight. I want to pray for you the promises. Father, thank you that you are in control. I pray for every life, every issue, every struggle, every battle, every disappointment, every fear. We give it to you. We lay it at your feet. We call on your name. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. You're a faithful God. You're true. And what you say works. And what you have done for us has made a difference. Thank you, Jesus. Bless everybody tonight. Challenge them to step out. May this be an altar time like never before where we just pour our hearts out to you. We're honest before you. We lay it on the table. Lord, I pray for those who have gone away from you tonight that they would come back. I pray for those that are dealing with loneliness or discouragement. I pray for addictions. I pray for your peace and strength. I pray for your grace and your love to just be poured out on them. 
Lord, we can't make it without you. Without you, we can do nothing. But Lord, thank you that you're standing there like the prodigal son with the dad, with the robe and the sandals and the and ready to throw the party. And Lord, you've never moved. You've never changed. You still care about us. Whatever the need, whatever the situation, we give it to you because you care about us. Thank you tonight for your promises. In Jesus' name. Would you step out and join us? Come on. And we're going to pray for people. If you have to go, you go. But I know that there are many, if not all of us, that could stand just a few moments to come forward and to let God touch you. Come on. In Jesus' name, you come. That's it. Step out. Hallelujah. Pastor Nolan will lead us. We're talking about the promises tonight, so you step out.
You're so-